Double Agent, the subtitle says it all, a solitaire game of calculation and risk in the world of espionage. Not in the world of real espionage so much, more like of course the James Bond kind of style. But there is a double agent in your organization, so your job is to figure out who that is from a number of possible suspects. It's a solitaire game, so it's just gonna be you. To set up the game, which is a little bit elaborate, especially the first time. You have these decks of cards, each representing a single agent. You shuffle them and the card that ends up being on top tells you the current location of that agent. And during setup you simply do that. You do that to set up each card. Each agent, Y, U, Z, etc, etc, in a different location. Next, we have these decks of detection cards. As you can see, each deck is made of four cards uh, with a one on top, followed by a two, a three, and a four. They're all the same uh, in structure, one, two, three, and four, but very different in composition. The first time that you play the game, you need to prepare the decks exactly according to this diagram. So that of those stacks that you see there, one of them only has blank cards. One has a target on top, followed by blank cards, and so on and so forth. There is a deck in there that has a suspect at level 1, motive at level 2, collusion at level 3, and a target level 4. And there's one that is exactly the same, but has a double agent at the bottom. This is the deck that you must find. You must find the agent that is currently sitting on top of this deck here that has the writing double agent at level 4. And simply you don't need to spend resources to look at those cards to, re to remove those suspects. If you find a blank card then you know for sure that that character is not uh, is not a double agent, so that character is out of the game. If you flip a card with a target, then the they try to kill you, or one of the confederates or double agent is trying to kill you. Or not simply, I would say one of the uh, enemy agents, because after all, if you find the target, uh, you were assassinated, or they try to assassinate you while you were looking for somebody who is not the real double agent. Even then, then you need to flip that card underneath, face up, to completely exonerate that agent in terms of gameplay. Although you, the player, know that that can be it. That cannot be double agent. You still have to exonerate them that way. So, uh, the turn is somewhat elaborate. As you can see, it has many steps. Lucky enough, many are optional. Basically, uh, this elaborate the turn track reminds you of all the times where you can play cards, uh, which is an optional action. And so you start with the, with the current step there, and as you take actions, you move down that way until bloop. You go back there. Your main resource in the game is gonna be uh, player cards uh, that come from from this deck, and they have uh, and they have different uh, uh, abilities and different effects. And there are different numbers here at the bottom that are used for outcome resolution. Think of them as die rolls. From time to time, you'll need to generate a random number. You draw a card and you look at that. And some cards are used in your hand, and some when they're in your hands, and other cards are used in different ways. There are a lot of different effects. You have an archive. You may use this card as a placeholder so you know which part is your archive. The game effects that allow you to store cards there and pick them up later. So it's a dynamic way to play around your hand limit, to save cards for later because they may not be useful now, but you want to have them around later. You have a deck of cards that indicates your location. You always start in Vienna and then you can spend actions to move to different locations. Say a discard a card that lets me move to Paris and now I am in Paris or Sao Paulo. Because it looks like there will be a lot of suspects in Sao Paulo. And then that's how I mark my location. Exposure level track. You start at zero. Different game effects will increase your exposure. And let's just say that doing an assassination attempt, the more exposed you are, 
the more likely you are to get killed. Matter of fact, the idea is when a game effects calls for an assassination attempt, you will usually be able to play cards to try to give you modifiers, then you draw a card, and to survive the attempt, you need to generate a number after modifiers are applied, which is equal to or higher than your exposure level. So, since you're trying to go higher, that's why low exposure is good then. Once you find your double agent, there is a procedure to see if you actually capture the double agent. At that point, a high exposure is good. I guess that intimidates them. They're more likely to make mistakes. For that outcome, you will again apply possible modifiers and you're generating an unknown number. And this time to be successful, you want that outcome to be equal to or lower than your exposure. So for that one action of trying to capture the double agent after you find them out, uh, you want high exposure. If you fail, then uh, you may lose the game unless you plan ahead, you have some resources saved, then you'll be able, you may be able to, uh, to trigger another procedure. I know, it's a little bit procedural and that's, and that's the way, this game is pretty procedural. So the idea is still, you're gonna use cards to find which of those is the double agent. At that point, you don't have to capture them right away. Matter of fact, most likely you will want to use actions to prepare your plan, uh, to increase your exposure level, to prepare plan Bs. Then you try to capture them, and if you capture them, then you win the game. If you don't capture them, but you can use the other procedure uh, to pretty much make up for your failed capture, then you continue to play and you can try to capture them again. You lose the game. If you find them and try to capture them and you don't have a plan B in place, that is, you don't meet certain conditions to be able to keep playing the game, you also lose the game if, if they assassinate you, if you can't survive an assassination attempt. Now, uh, again, you will have cards in hand at the beginning of the turn, you're in the first step, you can play a card optionally and simply generate and simply use the effect that they described there. Early on, you will hope probably to get a card that lets you travel so you can go to the location where, uh, where the suspects are. Detection step. You will discard the cards from your hand to be able to flip the card on top of one of the decks. If you are in the same location as the agent for whom you are looking at the detection stack, then you only discard one card. If you are in a location and you want to look at somebody else's detection deck, then you need to discard two cards. It's a pretty steep cost, really. But I'm in Sao Paulo. I want to look at that one. And so I simply discard a card and I'm good to go. I can look at the first detection level and it turns out that's a suspect. Now I know, I know that the player is one of these and I already narrowed it down a little bit. Now here's the tricky thing though. At the beginning of the game, uh, I can look at any detection level one card. Oh, after I look, I get the card at the end of the turn, I'll put it up there. So that's just a reminder that... Uh, that player is a suspect. So at the beginning of the game, I can look at any detection one level. To access detection level two cards, I cannot just go, I'm there in Sao Paulo, why don't I keep uh, looking into that case, which is so promising. Uh-huh, no, I'm gonna travel the world. To get access to a new level of detection for the first time. So detection card two when I only have one, detection card three for the first time. I need to be in the same city as the agent undergoing detection. I uh, And there must be a blank detection card turned up from a preceding level. That means there must be a blank detection card turned up from a preceding level. So before I access level 2, I must have a blank card turned up. In other words, I need to find this person. I need to find this person. So in Sao Paulo, I, I travel, I spend resources, or I discard two cards, I look for this one. Nope, it's a suspect. I cannot look at any of those cards because I don't have a blank cards yet. I discard two cards next round. Oh, there you go. Now, if I'm in Kiev, I could look at that card there. So, uh, I see the point. They don't want you to just go through one deck because maybe you're lucky. You find, Maybe that is double agent. And boom, I just could that through that deck and I'm done. 
but it just feels weird thematically and also kind of very mechanical to have to travel the world to find that blank card then I keep investigating and after I investigate a bunch again I, I take my detours looking for a blank card and the strangest thing is again after you've been shot at then after we shot at you want to keep looking to exonerate that person because the blank card is under the target card so detection step in a sense the heart of the game or the heart of the first part of the game when you're looking for your um, suspect then you can play another card then is the setback step in which you will draw a card from the setback deck deck and you will resolve negative effects uh, that come from there you have the option of playing another card the archive step is when you can place or retrieve cards from your from your hand uh, to and from your hand and your archive and then you draw cards and then you uh, that's when you at the end step you move the detection card to them from there to the row on top so this is the general idea you will play cards again to look at these decks uh, try to save cards in your archives so that when they attack you which they will you have defenses also plan ahead so that uh, that uh, you're able to capture your double agent when you find them and or to be able to escape in case that you fail to catch them Manage your exposure level and continue like this until either you trigger one of the conditions that will cause you to lose the game or you're able to capture the double agent. Double agent is a game that I really wanted to love and that hasn't quite happened. I wanted to love it because I love the theme. As I read the rule book, there were a lot of interesting things that I liked there. The idea of setting up those decks uh, and then all set up in that specific way and then you shuffle them around so you don't know which one is which. And so it felt very thematic. I'm looking into someone's uh, private life and oh, it turns out this has nothing to do. Oh, somebody's shooting at me from a dark alley. Oh, there's a suspect. Oh, and then I'm finding more things. But now that turns out to be uh, a dead end also until I finally find the double agent, etc., etc., etc. It was so promising. Uh, and then uh, as I played the game, uh, the problem is the first game or two, the game does feel pretty fiddly. There are just a lot of slightly different procedures. You can't just apply one. To the other they work in slightly different ways um, and, and by the time say the third game you okay now I really I really grok this I really know how to play it, the, the, it starts feeling a little bit uh, repetitive because ultimately the script uh, will play out uh, the same in every game there isn't a huge variety of effects when it comes to the setbacks. There isn't a huge variety of things that can happen. And ultimately, again, I see why they had that element of forcing you to go around the world and clear one character before you can de delve into uh, the next level of detection. But it really makes the game a follow script, which is very, very rigid. Every time I need to go and look for the blank card in level one, before I can start the tech level 2, then I need to get the blank card there, and then, and blah, 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 blah. Again, also thematically, there's this total, to me, uh, uh, break in, the, in, in, the, in the, how immersed the story world is, when I know that somebody has a blank card there, and I just need to find the right combo cards to discard them, to flip that blank card, which I already know is there, so I can then go and start my investigation again. But again, the fact that the script feels the same every time uh, makes it paradoxical, at least in my experience. The game starts feeling repetitive by the time you start feeling comfortable playing it. You don't necessarily feel like you want to play all that much uh, anymore. And then also the final phase, uh, uh, the final phase of the game, again, is very thematic. But I, I like when my, th my games have a strong theme. And mechanics that bring variety, richness, interesting decisions. But here, when you get to the final phase, well, I can choose to go and try to capture the double agent now with maybe four chances in six of succeeding, uh, which is not bad, but it's not certain. 
or play a lot more and go through many more turns as I'm optimizing my archive, I'm looking for those cards, store them, and basically I'm trying to get in my hand the combo cards that will allow me, in case I fail to capture double agents, to stay in the game. And I tried to do that once, and after a while I was like, you know, I, I, then the game feels like it's dragging too much, and then I'm just, when I see who the double agent is, I got at least 50% chances, I go for it. And sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. Then it leads us to another uh, problem, or maybe a pet peeve of mine. I'm okay with games with a lot of randomness or very little randomness. A problem that I have is with games that have all the occasional random checks that have, but those few occasional random checks have a huge impact. I'm okay with rolling dice a hundred times and each has a small effect and then, you know, there's a curve of things. But here, if I'm trying to survive five assassination attempts, each is a, is a die or live, then randomness may play too much of a role. Because I have my little engine, everything is really optimized, everything, there's only a chance in six that I get assassinated, and I get assassinated. And that's just annoying. Uh, again, for some of you, maybe that won't be a problem. You will see that as thematic. Even the best agents can get shot in the, in the back when they don't expect it. But to me, in game terms, again, it's just not the kind of handling of randomness that I enjoy. Uh, if I build my nice little deck building, engine building, archive building, I want it to pay off in almost every case. I don't like a random check that gives me two chances in six of dying because that's not that's not nothing it may still happen so double agent i like the general idea um but it just the, the the overall implementation was not particularly appealing to me the game felt a little procedural a little repetitive and ultimately with just not the kind the kind of randomness that I enjoy, I enjoy in games. And this one is, alas, my assessment of Double Agent. I wish I enjoyed it more and my assessment was more positive, but that's not the case.